To bring in Kenny Hsu, he is the author of An Inconvenient Minority, and he is the host of the Inconvenient Minority with Kenny Hsu podcast. Welcome. And Bill Evers, he led the Trump transition team on education issues. He is a senior fellow at the Independent Institute. Welcome to you both, Kenny. Quite frankly, this is happening so quickly, and I don't think they've thought through the, all the ramifications. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Well, I wanted to give you... I wanted to give you an example of what happens when you kill the SAT. When you kill the SAT, a poor student, and I talk about this in my book, An Inconvenient Minority, a poor student who otherwise would not be recognized in his high school, who would otherwise not have a motivation to go to college, uh, the SAT enables a poor student uh, to be recognized, to be, to be able to compete with even rich students in Greenwich, Connecticut, or San Francisco, or Palo Alto. Uh, it enables, you know, a kid... Uh, who doesn't know his own self-worth to be able to recognize, wow, I am actually intelligent. And when you get rid of the SAT, what are you going to start admitting on? Are you going to start admitting on extracurriculars? You're going to start admitting on holistic personality scores? Uh, those things bias heavily in favor of the rich. So actually, if you actually want true equity, if you really want real achievement, uh, you should keep the SAT. You shouldn't get rid of it. Yeah. Aptitude. It's the scholastic aptitude test, not achievement test. It's like how your potential to do academic work. Uh, Bill Evers, your thoughts, please. Well, it does. It does uh, register achievement too, though. If you're if you're doing well in class, they try to match that both companies, ACT and SAT, the College Board, try to match the test to the kind of things that are done in classroom, so it reflects classroom learning. I think the key thing to understand here is that there's some kind of mob pressure, political pressure on the UC decision makers to get them to go along with this settlement. It's in 2020, a faculty task force did an over 200 page report that found that these tests predicted freshman grades, they predicted final GPA, they predicted staying on and not dropping out. They, they predicted graduation rates. They're a fabulous tool. They're knowledge that helps the university pick good students. And exactly what uh, my colleague here said, it helps find kids that would otherwise be lost in the shuffle. And look, forgive me for if this is stereotypical, but uh, Kenny, you know, um, Asians are, are, are viewed as a group that does particularly well on standardized testing. And for all of the rhetoric and all of the hand-wringing I hear about how Asians are treated in America right now, this seems like a real concrete blow and potentially quite prejudicial um, to Asian, Asian students. Well, that's exactly it, Greg. Um, you know, the, the, the test and the elimination of the test uh, is going to hurt Asian Americans more than anybody, uh, I would say, because Asian Americans tend to do well in these sorts of exams. By the way, a lot of Asian Americans don't come from privileged backgrounds. They view performance on standardized tests as their way up, their, their ability to, 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 to get a good education in life. And their parents who love them just want them to have the best education they can, and they use these standardized metrics um, to, to show, hey, we are capable, we are apt. We may not fit your so-called desired personality or your desired person. Uh, you may want somebody of a different race, but guess what? We're just as competent as anybody else, and we're here to prove it. This is wild. This is so significant, uh, and I, I don't think it should be happening. Bill Evers, uh, you mentioned they're giving into the mob. Is there any movement on the other side to restore sanity uh, to this conversation? Because it looks like the train has left the station. Well, we had a, a attempt to try to restore affirmative action in public institutions, uh, which which has gotten rid of by the UNS initiative many years ago. And there was an attempt in the last election cycle to bring it back. The people who fought that are still around. And there are lots of people who favor merit, in, including college professors. I mean, after all, this is a liberal faculty at the University of California, and they supported this report, of uh, this 200-page report. And one of the points is, with all the grade inflation that goes on, mm. how are they going to accurately pick the qualified students? 
And it particularly goes on in well-to-do high schools. If they, if they only rely on grades, there'll be pressure for even more grade inflation. Well, I am so not shocked. They're, they're, I'm yeah, not shocked that a bunch of liberal professors made a bad decision. We're going to have to leave it there for now. Bill Evers, we appreciate it so much. And Kenny Shu, please check out his podcast, An Inconvenient Minority with Kenny Shu. Gentlemen, thank you. We will be right back.